how many ladders do I need on a storm? Guy, I think that was your question. Eight? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I have my pickup truck, right? Mm -hmm. So I always carried a 20-footer and a 28-footer. And that got me on 100% of everything I was looking for. Yeah. Um, and I think you probably get this question a lot too, Matt. Oh, do I need to go buy a truck? Uh, no, yeah. you don't need to go buy a truck. Um, we have adjusters that, that literally adjust in a Toyota Camry. Yeah. Right? So uh, a 14-foot extendable and maybe an 18-foot you know, collapsible ladder, those will work. Um, I know my 20 foot extension ladder, just cause I'm a big guy, that 20 foot extension ladder got me on 95% of everything. Yeah. Some companies don't like you to do double pulls anymore, but it was light aluminum. So I could get on top of the first story. I could pull that ladder up. Um, Maybe a, an extension ladder that is good and sturdy to get you on the first, and maybe an expandable ladder that might get you up to that eight foot or ten foot off of the to the second. Right. Yeah. The peak of the garage. Peak of the garage man, or something. Man. Yeah. Double so, pulls are dangerous. I just double pulls are dangerous, and it, again, back in the day when I started, they told us we had to get there. So, whatever it took to get to the highest ridge, that's what right. we had to do. And then I guess, you know, some of my old friends all died along the way. And they're like, oh, maybe you shouldn't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, and just a note about that, you know, so when we're talking about it, we're scoping roofs. So if, say you have like a, and this is like in, the, in the many places in the Midwest built in the 60s and 70s and 80s, super duper common house. It's a two-story house, right? And it's got it's just a straight gable on the front. And then there's a garage stuck to the side of it that's got a one-story roof, right? And there's the only way to get to the two-story part is either to use a two-story ladder off the front or to, or to climb up onto the top of the, the garage on the one story, pull your ladder up and set it up and climb up onto the, the top. I would say you can, this is kind of the way this sort of shakes out, right? So. If you, if, if you climb on that second story, then you can build for two story, but it takes more time and you, uh, it's more dangerous, right? So you're, you're, it's a much higher risk. Um, you can do, most companies that I've ever worked for, if you've got a front and back slope only, right? And you have the, on the one story and then the second story is also a front and back slope and they face the same directions. So basically you just have two basic uh, directional slopes facing one facing north, one facing south, and front and back, whatever. You can do your test squares on the one story, and if you find enough damage to total the roof on, on those in your test squares, you've totaled the roof. You don't have to climb on the second story just to say that you climbed on the second story, right? So I wouldn't, you know, if you, if you climb up onto that onto that garage on that one story and you're like, oh my gosh, look at all this hail damage, I'm not wasting my time climbing on the second story. I might walk out to the far corner of the backyard and count the vents and everything and write it down on my sheet. And then yep. I'm out of there. I mean, you can get the measurement. You know, if you stand on your tippy toes, you can get the measurements of that ra the rafters, and then you from you can get all the rest of the measurements from the ground on that. Um, so. So do you know that you can measure a whole out roof from the ground, Matt? Really? Can you tell me? Tell me yeah. about this. <laughs> <laughs> no. It, it, if if you know what Xactimate's looking for, you can measure an entire house from the ground without ever stepping on the roof. Yeah. So again, we won't get into, maybe we'll, maybe we won't get into Xactimate, but it's really important that you know how that program works. So you can, if you need to measure an entire uh, roof from the ground, yeah. which is really just going around the footprint. Yep. Yeah, that's true. I mean, as long as you know the pitch, you can, Correct. You can get that, get that whole thing. Um, there's a million different ways to kind of like, because I'll tell you what, even if you can't access a roof like that, sometimes they're super steep and you had to crawl up through the valley to get to the top and do a little test square where you're kind of hanging onto the ridge over here. That's hard to measure that roof, and that's a big part of why it's so dangerous is that you now have to measure all those little bumps, especially in like places like Dallas or, I mean, in Texas, so many steep roofs. A lot of places in the country, you occasionally find a steep roof, but it's these vast 
suburbs with you know four, five, six, twelve pitch roofs, and that's it, right? So you may you may not have to get on. You might spend a whole summer and never get on a steep roof, um, except for maybe once or twice or half a dozen times or whatever. So you just you never know. But you you can't pick and choose. You can't say, well, I don't want to go to Dallas for a big hailstorm because there's too many steep roofs there. Just when when Omaha gets hit, call me. You'll you'll never get called. Right. So. How many ladders do I need on a storm? Guy, I think that was your question. Eight? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I have my pickup truck, right? Mm-hmm. So I always carried a 20-footer and a 28-footer. And that got me on 100% of everything I was looking for. Yeah. Um, and I think you probably get this question a lot too, Matt. Oh, do I need to go buy a truck? Uh, no, yeah. you don't need to go buy a truck. Um, we have adjusters that that literally adjust in a Toyota Camry. Yeah. Right. So uh, a 14 foot extendable and maybe an 18 foot, you know, collapsible ladder. Those will work. Um, I know my 20 foot extension ladder, just cause I'm a big guy, that 20 foot extension ladder got me on 95% of everything. Yeah. Some companies don't like you to do double pulls anymore, but it was light aluminum so I could get on top of the first story. I could pull that ladder up. Um, maybe a, an extension ladder that is good and sturdy to get you on the first and maybe an expandable ladder that might get you up to that eight foot or 10 foot off of the to the second right yeah the peak of the garage peak of the garage or something yeah double pulls are dangerous i just double pulls are dangerous and again back in the day when i started they told us we had to get there so whatever it took to get to the highest ridge that's what we had to do and then i guess you know some of my old friends all died along the way and they're like oh maybe you shouldn't do that anymore (laughs) Well, and just a note about that, you know, so when we're talking about it, we're scoping roofs, so it, say you have like a, and this is like in the in the many places in the Midwest built in the 60s and 70s and 80s, super duper common house. It's a two-story house, right? And it's got it's just a straight gable on the front, and then there's a garage stuck to the side of it that's got a one-story roof, right? And there's the only way to get to the, t- the two-story part is either to use a two-story ladder off the front or to, or to climb up onto the top of the the garage on the one story, pull your ladder up and set it up and climb up onto the, the top. I would say you can, this is kind of the way this sort of shakes out, right? So if you, if, if you climb on that second story, then you can build for two story, but it takes more time and you, uh, it's more dangerous, right? So you're, you're, it's a much higher risk. Um, you can do most companies that I've ever worked for if you've got a front and back slope only right and you have the, on the one story and then the second story is also a front and back slope and they face the same directions so basically you just have two basic uh, directional slopes facing one facing north one facing south and front and back whatever you can do your test squares on the one story and if you find enough damage to total the roof on, on those in your test squares and you total the roof you don't have to climb on the second story just to say that you climb on the second story, right? So I wouldn't, you know, if you, if you climb up onto that, onto that garage on that one story, and you're like, oh my gosh, look at all this hail damage. I'm not wasting my time climbing on the second story. I might walk out to the far corner of the backyard and count the vents and everything and write it down on my sheet, and then yep. I'm out of there. I mean, you can get the measurement, you know, if you stand on your right. tippy toes, you can get the measurements of that ra- the rafters, and then you, from, you can get all the rest of the measurements from the ground on that. Um, so. So do you know that you can measure a whole roof from the ground, Matt? Really? Can you? Tell me, tell me yeah. about this. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, if, if you know what Xactimate's looking for, you can measure an entire house from the ground without ever stepping on the roof. Yeah. So, again, we won't get into, maybe we'll, maybe we won't get into Xactimate, but it's really important that you know how that program works so you can, if you need to, measure an entire uh, roof from the ground, yeah. which is really just going around the footprint. Yep. Yeah, that's true. I mean, as long as you know the pitch, you can correct. You can get that get that whole thing. 
Um, there's a million different ways to kind of like, because I'll tell you what, even if you can't access a roof like that, sometimes they're super steep and you had to crawl up through the valley to get to the top and do a little test square where you're kind of hanging onto the ridge over here. That's hard to measure that roof, and that's a big part of why it's so dangerous is that you now have to measure all those little bumps, especially in like places like Dallas or, I mean, in Texas, so many steep roofs. A lot of places in the country, you occasionally find a steep roof, but it's these vast suburbs with you know, four, five, six, 12 pitch roofs, and that's it, right? So you may, you may not have to get on, you might spend a whole summer and never get on a steep roof, um, except for maybe once or twice or half a dozen times or whatever. So you just, you never know, but you, you can't pick and choose. You can't say, well, I don't want to go to Dallas for a big hailstorm because there's too many steep roofs there. Just when, when, when Omaha gets hit, call me. You'll, you'll never get called. Right. So. Hey, hey, Mr. Insured, how's it going? It's going great today. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. This is actually Guy Grant from Veteran Adjusting School. So you want to learn claims from the most experienced veteran adjusters, but you can't find anybody who will let you ride along with them? Then let me tell you about Adjuster TV Plus. Developed by Adjuster TV and its industry partners, including the high-end training center Veterans Adjusting School in Arizona, Adjuster TV Plus is a growing library of in-depth training videos created just for independent adjusters. Learn scoping and estimating from professional trainers and adjusters. Learn how to handle customer interactions with confidence. Learn the ins and outs of scoping and estimating exterior hail claims. And coming soon, detailed videos about how to handle smoke, ice dam, water claims, and auto claims. Adjuster TV Plus also features the very best of three years of Adjuster TV's YouTube videos, ad-free. Educational, entertaining, and inspiring. Come ride along with us on Adjuster TV Plus. Thank you.